Oh, ja, ja, yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah, greetings one and all. You don't know this is Novel Basin Myers. Now, this Saturday coming will be World Hemophilia Day. A lot of persons don't know what hemophilia is. So, for this week, I'll be showing you some videos to bring some awareness across and how badly it has affected people living in Jamaica and worldwide. So, today I'll be sharing a small video on hemophilia and what it's about. Hemophilia is an X-linked disorder that affects predominantly males while the females are carriers. So basically we have transmission from mother to son and the patients that present with hemophilia, their clinical presentation would vary depending on the severity of the disease. So we classify them as being mild, moderate or severe depending on the activity level of the deficient factors. So the hemophiliacs are deficient in clotting factors, factor 8 and the, or factor 9. So the persons who are deficient in factor 8 are, class, are called hemophilia A and the ones deficient in factor 9 are hemophilia B. So basically these are factors that are needed to help blood clot in the event of an injury. So each person has an injury and the blood clots after a while. So to achieve that clot there are different factors involved in the clotting process. So the people with hemophilia are deficient in one of these factors and as such when they have injuries their blood does not clot or it doesn't clot as fast and this can lead to complications. The majority of our patients, or our patient population here at the University Hospital are patients that have severe hemophilia. These are the ones that develop spontaneous bleeding into their joints or into their muscles. And the problem we have with our patients is availability of factor concentrates which should be in the event of a bleed you want to replace the deficient factor to arrest the bleeding and prevent further damage to whichever organ that the bleeding has occurred in. To stop the bleeding for someone that has hemophilia, depending on your diagnosis, is you can either have hemophilia A or hemophilia B and depending on which you get treated with factor A or factor 9. As really says availability in Jamaica very, very scarce. What happens is that we normally get donated products. Donated products normally come from the World Federation of Hemophiliacs or other bodies, in, other international bodies. For someone to really purchase it in Jamaica is really expensive. To put things in perspective, someone should to get a treatment for someone that has hemophilia. At a minimum is probably 1,000 to 2,000 units. How much the cost per unit? We're talking over five US dollars. That times Jamaican rate, you know what we're talking about. So, what we have in most cases is that persons, if the factor isn't available, would have to stay home. So, what we find is a situation is that sometimes you can either lose your job, persons who are going to school. They miss the exams, miss days of schooling, and so on. And finally, in some cases, there are persons that have even dropped out of school, which doesn't really help the society, doesn't really help Jamaica and our world. Living with hemophilia growing up, it's a, it's a difficult one. Growing up as a youth with hemophilia, going to school, I couldn't go to school as often as other 
person used to go to school. I remember going to school sometime, all three, three months out of one year, going to school because like me go this week, next week I have to drop out. So growing up as a young failure, it was difficult. There was three brothers of us. The bigger brother, it wasn't so bad on him, but me and my next brother that I follow him pass off now because him went to Mandeville Hospital and there are time, many a time we go to hospital and because it's the giant bleeding and so forth. Many of the doctor don't take this thing as serious as supposed to be because they don't see the blood that is bleeding out. But sometimes we explain to them and say we can have bleeding in the giant and you don't see the bleeding. You can have a belly because I remember my brother was bleeding in his belly and he was on the wheelchair for quite a while, nearly an hour. And I when cold sweat was washing me and I get to understand and I went in drop out of the wheelchair at them time the doctor and nurse run to him attention and by the time he run to attention it was too late because by the time they put him on the stretcher and to give him some attention he pass off because them don't really pay attention to hemophilia can treat it as urgent as it's supposed to be so growing up with hemophilia is really a difficult task I remember working at KPH I cannot keep a job because through his contract work sometimes you work today and there are times two or six so nobody keeping you after that I send out application over and over and because when time them doing a like an interview and so forth and I tell them that a hemophilia and I tell them the situation many of them not keeping us because the problem is them want people that are strong to do them work worse with contract work sometimes if it's the government you're working them will overlook it and say all right so and so but doing contract work at that time it was difficult because I work over 10 years at KPH at that it's really not easy living with hemophilia you know I myself have hemophilia and trust me it's not an easy road but I'll be sharing my story with you sometime this week but for more information on hemophilia you can check out any one of those at form you see there on the screen also special thanks goes out to Carrie Star for allowing me to use her music as a theme song for Pearl Hemophilia Day enough respect Carrie Star you can also follow Carrie Star on any one of the platforms you see on the screen there wanna thank you all for watching please remember to like share and subscribe